this agenda. Got a photo. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I'll move. Second. I'll say. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Agenda is approved. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Thor now. He's going to present the budget. Dr. Thor. Dr. Thor. Yeah. Dr. Thor, are you prepared for this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can wait right here. <laughs> <laughs> I got it right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how are you going to get it out there? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, after you know meeting with the budget committee a couple of times, I mean, I, I you know I generally you know when I start to prepare a budget, you know I start with last year's uh, audit, um, and, and you don't even really need to use that. I mean, they have a whole bunch of worksheets for you to use that automatically fill in the forms for the, the documents that you actually pass. Two of which we actually, you know, the board has to take action on tonight. So. Uh, you know, I start plugging in those numbers from uh, our audit from last year, and then we guesstimate where we're going to finish at this year because we have to have this done. I have to have all this work done, you know, before we have those final final numbers for the for the fiscal year just passed. And then, you know, you, the, then the big ones, of course, uh, is the is the planning for this current fiscal year. We start on September first. Um, so I just kind of put some generic things together, and for the budget committee, just for for people's uh, you know information. Uh, I prepared about four different budgets. You know, one that is almost exactly status quo, which is essentially a status quo levy, trying to keep the levy just essentially status quo. After valuation, of course, we've got to wait for valuations, which aren't certified till the 20th of August, right? So that's the big, the, that's the, when you get that information, you finally have all the information you need to start to prepare the budget. Okay, our valuations went down just under 3%, just under 3%. So a static levy would generate less in property tax revenue. So you, you kind of know that some of that information, then you start to work. Okay, but uh, Kelly and I spent some time kind of projecting, you know, some things for, you know, what we're maybe looking at and, and what our personnel expenses are going to be, which is 75% of our expenses, which is set obviously between the board and the PPA, uh, it, you know, two years ago, dang near two years ago, you know, that, that figure was set. So 75% of our budget for this fiscal year was pretty much set a couple of years ago when when an agreement was reached between the board and the PPA. And that's just, you know, that, that's the way it is for every school district, essentially. Okay, so, the, you know, the things that, the, you know, you really kind of make some decisions on, uh, you know, or, or, which is a small piece of the pie, actually, is what we met with the budget committee. And so I prepared a few different options. I said, here's a, here's a real conservative one if we wanted to cut, you know, you know, cut right down to the bones. And uh, here's a status quo. And here's one maybe a little more ambitious if we start thinking about, uh, you know, more, more likely if we're thinking about facilities or if we're thinking about maybe a one-to-one -one initiative which could have some additional expense compared to what maybe what we've had in the past okay uh, so we try to you know project that and think about that and so meet with the budget committee and they say hey what, what if we, you know can we do this can we do this and, and I can plug numbers in as we're talking and they can kind of adjust some things and mainly, mainly out of the hundreds and hundreds of numbers that are on my budget worksheets uh, there's really about three or four that we focus on what's our tax asking what's our levy Okay, in the general fund and the building fund, because those are the only two areas that we're going to levy. We could levy in QC Puff, but we don't. And QC Puff would be for life safety needs that we might have. Uh, so, for example, if we had mold, we could levy funds to clean up mold. Or if we if we wanted to put together and build an ADA ramp on the south side, we could actually levy funds to do that. But we don't need to because we have a lot of levy authority because we're well below the dollar five limit already. So QC Puff really doesn't apply to us. Um, so we really only have two levies to be concerned about. The general fund, which again is set for the most part because you have, you have utilities and you have personal expenses and you have transportation expenses. Those things are just going to happen. Okay, we got to pay for it. Okay, uh, but we don't necessarily have to pay for refurbished doors, which if you look around, most of them are, are on. We don't have to air condition you know, this, that, or the other thing, or those kinds of, the, those are the decisions that boards make on, on what, what will affect, you know, you have a little more play in, in, in other levies. So, um, the, the, the Department of Education requires you to uh, uh, have an exact balance, and Trent gave me a good question today, and, and it took me, a, you know, a couple of years of putting budgets together to kind of understand why do we, why, do this, why do, does it show this number? Why do you have to put this number here? Well, you're, you, you have your revenues and disbursements have to balance, and so whatever you expect your 
disbursements to be, you have to show the exact same revenue you know, in the bottom half of your worksheet. So you essentially have to budget all of your resources. And so it almost looks like you're spending millions of dollars more than you really are. But what it, it, it just, what it really shows is, you know, here's, here's your, here are your total amount of resources. And you have to show that on a budget sheet. Um, so for example, the good question was on our activity account. And, and uh, we, we happen to have, uh, uh, and I don't know if it's an anomaly or not, but this last fiscal year, we generated gate receipts at a pretty higher clip than we did the previous year. So we had, we had that additional revenue. Uh, we subsidized that account by $60,000, which we maybe didn't need to. And so we actually boosted what ended up being our ending balance for the year, which we had to carry over that ending balance. So we started with a healthy ending balance. And then if you notice in your activity, if you look back at, at, at your activity ledger, you notice our FFA and our interest, those two have doubled uh, in income over the past year. And so that shows in the bottom line, our activity account, $125,000 ending balance. Okay, and now I have to show to spend all that. I have to show that as a disbursement. Since that's, not, since that's in our revenue half, I have to show that as a disbursement. Now, are we gonna spend that? Well, we, you know, I mean, in, in some way, shape, or form, but it doesn't mean that, you know, so I mean, that's a, it's a great question, and it shows on, on this sheet, and most of the numbers on this sheet are just really gonna confuse people. It's your tax request, which, you know, I can wrap my mind around just a little bit more, but, um, so that's what we're given to work with, and it, again, it's taken me a few years. This is my fifth budget I've prepared, and so even though you only do it once a year, you start to get a little more savvy and understand a little bit more. I shared my budget with two people for support, Craig Pease, who I've seen every year since I've been a superintendent. I just sent it to him. He looked at it sent me back some ideas. I didn't go sit down and visit with him for three hours like I've done in the past, and I, 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 I wish I had because I enjoy spending time with him. I learn something new from him every year, but this year I didn't feel like I had to. Sent it to Janice Eric, the Department of Ed. She shared with me something that, that was helpful. So just for example, the, the, the Department of Ed uh, Revenue and Education Committee is looking to uh, 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 kind of pull the reins on school districts and the amount of money that they can carry over from one year to, a next, to the next. Uh, so your, your, uh, um, your spending authority you know, would, would, it would, you would actually have more spending authority for every year to year, and so they want to trim that. So she said, Darren, I want you to do this and this and this with your budget. Now it will show that you're not gonna have any carryover next year, but that's good because they might take that away from you anyway. So I was able to show that in a disbursement. So it's part of our budget, and, it w and if we don't spend it, then we won't. We have carryover, some carryover every year. Uh, this year was a hundred and some thousand dollars, okay? But you have, you have the, the Unicam rule, next year they could do something and then we would find out next year's budget cycle where we don't have access to that. Last year's, you know, prior year's uh, uh, carryover funds. So, <laughs> visit with a couple people. So, you know, I, I hope and, and think and believe that the budget, that the budget committee, you know, said, yeah, this is the one we want to take to the full board. And that's what I'm going to share with you right now. So I just do the groundwork and, I, and you expect me to know a few more things than you do. Uh, and find out a few more things, and I, I certainly hope that I have. Um, uh, but the, the budget that I'm going to share with you, with also with, with a lot of trends that we're going to look at very briefly, uh, is the one that uh, Mr. Souser and Mrs. Hanks and Mr. Rasmussen have had a little more time to look at and that we've met on a couple of times, and this is the one that they're recommending to you. So I've got a slide for each of these. Okay, so there's what our state aid has done. You know, this is just a visual and the specific numbers you can tell a little bit from the left-hand side. So we've ticked up a bit from 31,000 to 35,000. Doesn't make a difference, but I don't know. It's a, it, it's a, it's a new teacher's salary without benefits. Okay, so, so there's our state aid. Like you can see down at 16, 17, we're at 237 bucks. But, um, uh, but this is what most rural schools state aid trend line has looked like for state aid, to be honest with you. So, Property valuations have done that, so if you lay that over the, the state aid a little bit, you can kind of see how that has affected that. Obviously, it's leveled off, ticked down a little bit. Again, we went down just under 3% in total valuations. Antelope went up, Knox went up, but Pierce went down uh, and drug everything down, because we get, uh, well, just over two-thirds of all our valuation comes from Pierce County. Okay, tax asking trends. Uh, we have more land and more property in Pierce County than we do at home. The school district area has, has um, most of it's land in Pierce County. Okay, so there are your tax asking trends. The general is the blue. 
okay? Uh, building and then the total. So this is, you know, what the board has done over the past several years to afford um, some of the projects, the facility projects that we've undertaken in the past five years, okay? And that's a result of this. We were at 1.5 cents uh, the year before I came, and this budget is gonna ask for 9.6 cents. Okay, and every cent you'll see generates about $70,000. Okay, there are your levy trends. Uh, so during, during the, the valuation spikes, the levy, you know, the, the board chose to bring the levy down as most school districts did, certainly appropriate. I mean, those are local decisions to bring that levy way down. So we were, we were over a dollar 10 years ago. And okay, your total levy asking tonight, it's gonna be about 66 cents. Okay, so there are just a lot of numbers, and so so it goes from, from here to here to here to there to there to there, and try to show from one year to the next the percentage of changes. So we probably spiked in valuations in 16, 17 at 747 million, almost 748 million. Pro probably not gonna get back up there. I mean, it just seems like the trend is certainly leveled off and slightly, you know, dipping slightly. Um, and then, you know, obviously the, you can see what, what, how that affects your, your taxes, uh, you know, that it, that it generates and the, the percentages. And sometimes it's, it's minuscule numbers, minuscule percentages, less than, you know, just about half a percent, for example, in the taxes generated decrease this year over, uh, over last year. Okay, so your levy rate, based on our per current property valuation, about 715 million. Okay, each one cent of levy would generate $71,500. Okay, so every penny is $71,500. Okay, 1% 1 goes to the county treasurer and generally 90 to 94, because all the taxes don't ever come in. So you re we're really not gonna get that much. Our levy is 715 million, a penny will generate that, but not all the taxes are paid. County treasurer's gonna get a piece. So our tax receipts are about 64,500 per penny. Okay, 64,500, so we're gonna, um, you know, well, and that's whether it's building levy or general levy. Okay, so every penny on the levy is worth about $64,500. Okay, the general fund percent of budget spent at end of fiscal year, and we've been watching this since our first budget last fiscal year almost. As soon as we bought that van and wrote a $40,000 check, um, our total budget was slightly smaller this year. So, uh, stands to reason that our, our percent of budget spent, which was about 91% this year, um, percent of budget spent. So as, as the budget gets a little smaller or stays static, you know, your percent spent is gonna go up. Okay, general fund budgeted. And again, these are showing all revenues that we would have in the district. And the general fund tax asking. So. This is probably a pretty good slide too, um, you know, to share with stakeholders that we've asked for la less taxes, you have asked for less taxes to run the school for the past three years, okay? And the tax asking in this budget is the lowest since 15, 16, okay? And everything goes up and everybody understands that and everybody knows that. So, you know, you, you know, sometimes you'd stand to reason that everything, is, every year you're just gonna go up 3% because everything goes up 3%. Um, but we've done some things intentionally and maybe some things other, and maybe also unintentionally that, uh, and again, our general fund doesn't have anything to do with air conditioning the 1920 building or, or the elementary project. That $2 million project is not part of this. Okay, that was all run through building fund money. And we took some depreciation. I shouldn't take that back. We took some depreciation money to, to pay for the first quarter of that. Okay, so asking for less, I mean, a, a half a cent, or a half a percent, I should say, <laughs> half a percent. Okay, so estimated revenues, Okay, uh, and again, these just come straight off of the worksheet, okay? And this is our carryover. So this is actually our cash in the bank and cash at the county treasurer, okay? And, you know, that's a figure that, 
you know, school districts can use to bring down your levy and bring down your tax asking. Okay, other major funds, so balances and all the rest of these, uh, and, and the rest of these funds, you know, are, are these. This shows the payoff of the two bond payments that we still have to make. You go okay. back, go back to that slide where that $2 million carryover. You actually have to show that we're going to spend that. We have to show this in a revenue. Yes, it's showed in a revenue, so I have to offset that with disbursements. Even though we want to have that here and over yeah. at the end of the year, you still have to show that we're going to yeah. get rid of it somehow. Yeah. So essentially, you know, you can ask for less in property tax requests. You could ask for less in pro because that's going to be down in the revenue. That's going to be in the same sheet as this. So I could ask for less. We could, the board could ask for less in property tax requests, and then I could show. Uh, I could balance that up off in the disbursements, you know, on the top half. So, you know, it's it's a, it's a bit complicated, I guess. After after a while, you, you kind of understand it a little more. But you do, I do have to show this as a revenue. Therefore, I have to balance that same amount out as a disbursement, where most of that just goes to, you know, personnel. I mean, I can show that, you know, my personnel expenses. Okay. Okay. Most a lot of that is a million dollars in the bank. No, oh, it no, this is not part no, of our depreciation. Part of it. it isn't. Uh, that's just that's cash in the bank. But I have to show that we're going to spend it in my disbursement column. So that's what's going to elevate uh, your your operating budget. Okay. So the other funds, and this, uh, you know, these uh, again come, you know, from the AFR. So I mean, these are actual numbers from our AFR last year. Our audit is coming up here in a few weeks. Uh, and so in a couple of months, we'll have actual numbers uh, for, no, these are actual numbers. These are guesstimates. Okay, so our audit for this year is coming up. So, you know, we show total resources of 9.5 million. Not, that's not, uh, it's not cash, obviously. Okay, so here's the first, uh, this is your, your budget hearing sheet. You know, and again, there's a lot of numbers on here that you know I, I wish weren't part of this document because people might say we got an 8.3 million dollar budget. Well, you know, we, you know, we're going to disperse 8.3 million that we're not, but we have to show that um, to, uh, to offset the, that same amount of revenues. Okay, but these figures came from that last uh, slide. Okay, but this is the one that goes, these are the two figures that go over to our tax asking document and then combined with your valuation sets your letter. Okay, so that's, that's your budget sheet. Why does the county hold so much? Why does the county? Yeah. Um, Did you say that? County gets one percent. I know, but didn't you say there's some money that they hold? The county treasurer's balance. Yeah. Yeah. What do they hold that for? Vicky, what do they hold our money for? <laughs> it's just like a collection fee. So then it's it's not ours to come back and get? No. Okay. It's a petty cash jar. It's a petty cash jar. Party fun. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on to the questions and comments from the board. And after that, we'll open it up to patrons. So right now, we'll just have a discussion with the board if there's any questions. This is a like, no like. Um, you know, like Dr. Earl said, he, he gave us about five different options when we went in the first meeting. We didn't like any, any of them. We had to make another one. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but we just kind of felt as a committee that uh, we didn't want to raise taxes. I mean, to me, I, I like to look at the asking. The valuations and the levies take care of themselves. It's, it's what we spend and what our asking is to me. And I kind of want to hold that the same. I didn't want to raise taxes, even though the levy's going up. But if you're one of the lucky ones, your valuation went down, your taxes won't go up. And we still feel like we've got some projects we want to do in the school. So we didn't want to drop that building fund levy until we 
until we get through what we kind of want to do there yet. So, but yeah, we wanted to hold Pat as much as we could. So we had him come up with one basically that was the same asking as last year. And uh, that's kind of what we decided on. So, um, instead, we held, held taxes pretty flat for four years in a row now. So I think everybody kind of got used to that and expected. Done quite a few improvements. You know, want to do it too, right? And people can see what we've done. I mean, they can walk in the building. It's not like our money's set in the bank. We haven't done anything with it. They can come in here and walk down the halls, do a lot of things. Notice that we spent the money and we've used it. We aren't just sitting on it or wasting it. So I haven't heard any complaints from anybody on what we've done to the facilities. Maybe you guys have. So that's, that's kind of what our thinking was and why we wanted to stay the way we were. So, you guys have any comments or ideas? Why? It's not set in stone yet, we can still adjust. Chris Turtel, do you want to add to that? Committee? What's our average cost per student based on this? Okay, that, and, and we're about 14000 Okay. I mean, and that, depending upon any variables <coughs> that you throw in there, I mean, that can, you know, change dramatically if you're just using your, your general budget, your total budget, operating budget. I mean, there's, so it can change quite a bit. And the state, in the state, it ranges from anywhere from 8000 to 800000 One school district, I think, Luke County, $100,000 per student. So I it's, we don't have yeah, <laughs> we're close to average. We're right in that belt. That's pretty good. Who's that? Based on our past experience with Palm Good and their budget, there'd be way up there too, wouldn't they? Uh, I have I have looked at what Palm Good is. Or they were always high on everything. So are you guys okay with what we kind of proposed here? Is that kind of what you're thinking or questions I'll open it up to the, the district the patrons if there's any questions out there you'd like to ask about this just budget. one clarification on the the building levy that's completely separate from this budget is that right or no it it is or does it, I mean, it, it that's it, this includes the building levy no you'll see that on the next slide okay yeah during the in the tax ask anybody else have a question This morning I had to grab some keys to my daughter in law after she was already at work. It was probably the first time I've walked through that building since the air conditioning and stuff was done during the day, the school day. And I just, I mean, it just jumps out at you. Yeah, how fresh the air is. So, so it's not stale and stagnant, it's moving. So, okay, so there's no questions out there. We're going to adjourn this meeting. Okay, I'm going to call a special hearing to consider the tax request meeting to order with Plainfield Public School District. I have a motion to do so. Second. Second. You got that, Gillian? Rasmussen and Trump. Uh, Either one. Yeah. Okay, it's so been first and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Meeting is open. The Open Meetings Act is still posted on the door back there. <laughs> Roll call, Kristen? Here. Dr. Thorne? Yes. Myself here. Wyatt? Yep. Tim? Yep. Yep. Trent? Yes. Everybody's accounted for. First item is to approve the agenda. Does anybody have any questions about the agenda? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve that. Move to approve the agenda. Second? Second. First and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Okay, I'll turn it back over to Dr. Arlt. 
but do a presentation of the okay. proposed tax request. Just one slide here. And I want to say to, to, to Vicki, of course, uh, Vicki was very much part of the kind of the push to, you know, improve facilities and such. And, and so Vicki's leadership has certainly been very important in, in the past several years and taking that building levy from a penny and a half up to nine and a half cents because that takes, that's a, that, you know, that's a tough, tough boat, you know, to, to ask for that. But if it, if it did, I think folks see that that money was spent wisely. So I think that's what it definitely was in. So here's your tax request sheet, folks. And, and uh, it looks different than in previous years because of LB 103, which was passed by the state legislature to make sure that if valuate, this would have been appropriate maybe about 10 years ago when valuations were starting to spike and school districts were saying, we left the levy the same, we left the levy the same. Yeah, but, be, but because their valuations went up 15%, they were you know making all kinds of, so they said, we didn't raise taxes, we left the levy the same. Well, but they generated so much more taxes. So LB 103 was passed last year by the unicameral and essentially it was designed to make sure that school districts weren't reaping the benefit of a simple valuation increase, and then uh, you know they could even drop the levy a little bit and and still generate more in taxes when those valuations were spiking. And so LB 103 requires you to lower your levy if your valuations go up and it drags your tax asking up with the exact same levy. You're required by the law to lower your levy so that you don't uh, generate any more tax revenue than you did the previous year, just based on a, on a valuation. Now you can, the board can still choose to do so, but you have to have a whole special hearing in a special form to say, no, we are going to raise taxes even. You know, we're gonna let the levy raise our taxes. So there's a few more columns on here, but really the only ones that are highlighted are the only ones that matter uh, you know, on here, okay? And it's last year's information, which is right here, okay? And then this year's information, and this is what the board, this is the, the, the budget, uh, the, the taxes generated, and the levies that the budget committee is presenting to, to the full board to consider tonight. So the property tax request for the general fund is actually gonna go down $23,646 in this budget compared to last year. So asking for less, okay, which is a ha just over a half cent percentage, I'm sorry, a half a percentage less, asking for just, so I mean, it's, it's fractional, okay. And in the building fund, asking for $6,060 less this fiscal year than last, which is you know, almost uh, 1%. Okay. And then the total tax asking, $29,706 less in total tax asking this budget compared to last. And what's that uh, due to the levy? Due to, even though it's asking for less money, this budget's asking for less in, in property taxes, because the valuation went down 3%, the levy actually ticks up a penny, even though it's generating less in tax dollars than it did the previous year. So the proposed levy for the general fund, 57 cents compared to 56 last year. Proposed levy for the building fund, 96 cents compared to 94. Oops, now we do that. There we go. 0.096, you can see it up there. Yeah, 9.6 cents. 9.6 cents. I mean, so total levy of 66 cents compared to 65, so it's a, it's a penny and two tenths, a penny and almost three tenths of a levy increase that generating less than tax dollars. So the, this is the column that of all the numbers and all the budget docs, these are what gets spit out. Okay, so that's your property tax slide you. information. We're going to open up to questions and comments from the board. Yeah, I don't know. I think you guys understand how love even valuations all work, don't you? Somewhat. As long as you're asking to stay the same, why the county sets the value and when you ask for your asking, then the levy states what it has to be. And, uh, you got to remember that some people, this is probably going to raise some taxes for, but some people it's going to lower the taxes, but that's not our 
what we do is decide whose taxes go, or whose valuations go up and go, just go down. That's the counties that decide that. And we don't have anything to do with that. So, so yeah, some people's taxes are going to go up, but it's not because of us. It's going to be because the, the county has changed valuations, moved them around, raised them or lowered them or whatever. So I know in Antelope County, one of the things was grain bins. They changed how they tax grain bins. So most people are paying more taxes on their grain bins, so the valuation went up just because of that. Not that they're any different than they were a year ago, they just decided to tax them differently. So things like that we don't have any control over. So, so. Am, I not, am I right, Mickey? Close on that? So, so any, any other questions, comments? And again, you want to share with the board, because the building levy is the one you can take down to zero. If you wanted to take it up to 14 um, it's the one you can live without if you wanted to um, but we discussed you know the next several years and really what are, what are still some of the some of the, the facility needs that we're looking at over the course of the uh, short term and, and long term and there's a sheet out there that existed before I came and, and we've still kind of used that and looked at that and moved some things around uh, and you know one of the, the projects that was bypassed this year that we want to consider next year is the are the lights in this building the lights in the ceiling tile and the grid in this building okay uh, and we knew that was a four hundred thousand dollar project bypass that for other things this summer perfectly reasonable decision to make but that'll still be there next year I mean we'll let you know so will we be able to consider that is that how important is that uh, the track has kind of risen up and in, in, into an area where okay, we're gonna have to deal with this we're in this is uh, uh, a six figure getting close to maybe a seven figure project depending upon you know what we find out and, and if we want to fix it for, for good 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 not just for another 10 years and then deal with it um, you know so that's still there do we have boiler issues coming up um, we need to anticipate that uh, so you know we, we kind of listed those and kind of looked at those and thought yeah it's still it's still necessary to try to generate some funds in the building uh, in the building fund and try to maintain pace we still have uh, $850,000 to pay on the elementary project for and a quarter each of the next two Junes. Um, this budget will will allow us to make that payment easy and still afford, you know, several hundred thousand dollars in, in other facility projects. Um, something like the track would probably require a plan for two or three years, maybe, though, of generating some building fund money. You don't have to pay for that unless you wanted to do a lease purchase type like we did with the elementary. We don't have the funds now, but we're going to put funds towards it for a couple of years. So we'll need that that, that building fund we'll let you do that. Okay. If there's no more questions or comments from the board. We'll open it up to the patrons. Any questions out there? Comments? Is there any other priorities besides? The lights, I assume the lights would be a priority since you guys recently discussed it, but the, the lights, the track, is there anything else? Oh, there are. Um, I mean, uh, I guess I would hesitate to speak maybe for the Building and Grounds Committee. Um, or I like the art room, for instance. Yeah. The air condition, air quality is horrible in the art We've room. We've got an art room issue. We probably have a, a little bit of a health safety issue maybe in our shop with ventilation. So what? how do we address that? Uh, we've talked about our music room, which you know can maybe use some modernization. So that's been discussed, and is the space appropriate? Um, is that just all ventilation issues, though? Like I knew, I thought they did some work in the the shop and the music room. This we summer. did lighting, lighting, and, and air conditioning. We didn't air condition the shop shop though. So the shop shop, where all the work is, where all the sawdust is, that just goes in the air into the floor. And so, I mean, so you know, those, those are some things that have been on the. It's a lot higher ticket items maybe that are on the list we probably have several ten twenty thirty thousand dollar needs that just every school deals with on a routine basis uh, we just paid five thousand dollars to have one of our rooftop units looked at five thousand dollars for you know I mean so we could have a boiler go out now that's a about a six figure uh, that you just need to be prepared for uh, so that's probably a discussion later building grounds probably needs to re, you know meet again probably you know sometime obviously in the next few months to kind of prioritize again and start thinking about you know next summer one of the music room issues was more acoustics it was something to do with the sound oh, okay 
that wasn't necessarily ventilation. Or no, no, not room. the music room. The, the ventilation was is more just the actual shop area. And, uh, you know, and so that's you're gonna have a gap paving project bill that's gonna come. We're gonna to have upwards of a hundred thousand dollar gap paving expense. Um, possibly, possibly. Lots of buildings still always in the back of our mind. I mean, it's nothing cut and dried there yet, so that. So I'm just, one, pop up. just curious about the general yeah. priority. I don't think that there are any commitments to next summer. The only expense we have next summer is $425,000 on our third payment on the elementary. That's the only commitment to building fund money. spend the rest of the money <laughs> between now and then. <laughs> I can find something. So. Question. Yep. Um, when you talk about the carryover money, is the building fund in that carryover fund? No, that's just general fund. Okay. And so there's nothing that the state could come in and take the building fund? No. Like, okay, no. That's good. So even with that bill, you don't have to spend it every year. No. Yeah. Okay. They try to, they, they've, uh, they've talked about trying to restrict it, bringing the 14 cents down to several school districts. Uh, who's close by? I think Bloomfield has 14 cent building fund levy. Um, uh, they just met, you saw the World Herald that uh, DC West built a new school without a bond issue. O'Neill built a new school without a bond issue. They're doing that with building fund money and lease purchases. And that's essentially what we did over at the elementary. That elementary project was the most expensive project in the history of the school, paid for with a lease purchase through the building fund. Um, so they're trying to uh, restrict it. So they might try to drop it from 14 cents to 12 or 10 even. It wouldn't affect us. But no, the state can't come and take monies that a school district has levied on its tax patrons, even if it's levied and, and left in the bank. Okay, if there's no other questions or comments, we'll adjourn this. Anybody need a break before we move on? Call meeting of the Plainview Public School District to order. We'll all stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll entertain a motion to declare an open meeting. Second. Second. First and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Meeting is open. The open Meetings Act is posted on the door back there. Roll call. Krista. Here. Dr. Thor. Trent. Here. Tim. Here. Wyatt. Here. Myself here. First thing we'll do is approve the consent agenda and we'll start with the agenda. Do you have any questions about the agenda? So the last meeting on August 12th, 12th meeting. Sarah Madison County CD is due uh, this month, actually in nine days. So I did receive notice from that the rate's not yet been determined, so I do expect it to be somewhere in between this 169 and 2.0. Now they did ask us, I did visit with them, uh, they did say, you know, you can actually make more money if you put this in a checking account. Now a checking account's going to have more volatility. So it could drop below. You lock in a CD for a year at a time. Um, but right now, a checking account is accruing more interest than any of our CDs. Well, OK. Um, I, mean, I don't know if that's ever been discussed. Did they say how much? I mean, is it just 
1.001 or is it a substantial uh, amount? No, uh, but it's, it, I know it's over two. But then, You can pull money out of a flex. So, which we have a couple of those. Well, it's something I'll have to, you'll have to get the information so, on the side on next month. Well, it's yeah, roll, roll I mean, over. you know, again, yeah, I don't, it matters not to me. It's you know, district's money, and you guys decide right. what you yeah. want to do with that. You know, they're, they're talking possibly another quarter point drop, half point drop yeah. by the Fed. I, it's a pretty obviously stay above two. I guess I. I wonder what the margin is. The difference. Okay. No, they don't. That's what they're borrowing for. Yeah. So we know this is now. So what happens with that money starting the 18th until we have our next meeting? So just sit in the account somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. It just sits that, that, that will adjust right. automatically. Um, you know, like I said, between 169 and 2. But, so, but we don't want to relock it in until we talk about it, probably. Well, I think it locks in on that. It does. It automatically rolls over. It does. So, yeah. So we won't have an option for something different. Well, I mean, that's no, this one. Yeah, this one. Okay. Is it not automatically locked in at whatever rate you're at right now? Well, it had for a couple of years until Did you ask? until you, yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense that you have to ask. You would think it would yeah. adjust based on the standard rate, but so as long as you ask, you're yeah. going to say I want the yeah. higher rate. I'm just talking about if the Before. checking account is, you know, if that's 3% versus the savings, if it's 2%, it might be something to look at. Uh, don't you have 10 days? From the maturity date? Yeah. To make the decision for this stuff up here, is there more? I, I, I don't know. I thought it was. Still won't get us to our next meeting, but no. at least you can find out and notify us if we have to do something quick. We'll have to do something. I mean, it's Maybe. probably not good. right. I don't think so either, but we'll just have to leave it that way. Okay, so now next month, this percent budget it should drop back down to 20%. Yeah, that'll be in our yeah, first budget of the next fiscal year. Month. So the one above it, that's been recently, right? Yes. All three of those have them, too. Yep. Yeah. 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 Is it called yeah. yeah. Oh, you're, you're 816. Yeah, we're yeah. sporting good. Mid kit, 
sport of volleyball. It would have been something that, that Tammy paid for, so um, I, don't, I don't know what y'all Could have been supplies yeah. with it. A new, uh, could have been a new med kit with supplies. I don't know myself if they carry it with them. The light one was there. It better be pretty good for two. There better be a lot of stuff in there for two hundred fifty-one dollars. You have a bottle one, have you? I bought one for my bottle for my boat. I paid twenty-one hundred, and it has a staple kit. Like, you don't get much for you get band-aids and some roll-ons for two hundred bucks. Very much in that line here. Time we got to go boating with you if you had a staple. <laughs> <laughs> That big chunk for the school nurse, is that something there we yep. 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 That's our expense for a halftime nurse. This time every year. The rafts, I knew I was going to have fixed air conditioner then. Yeah, my rooftop unit. Every, every time they come, they find something else that they need to come back for. And I'm not necessarily questioning because I know there's a thousand moving parts of those things. Um, it just seems that we could be more efficient. We, we being them, <laughs> when they come. But that's only about half of what the rest of the world is, wasn't it, to fix it? No, we still haven't. It, that's not the big fix is okay. still a decision that will have to be made. We're kind of just getting through this cooling season. We'll have to make that decision before next summer on whether to spend 11000 to fix or 30000 to replace. Okay. I was hoping that that so was all right. I, I don't know, like compressor. Something out. Freon, wasn't it? Freon did well, something. Something that cost $11,000 to fix, but and of course, you, know, you can fix it, but the thing is X amount of years old. You wouldn't put that much into, you know, just like your, your automobile, you decide whether to put $5,000 into it. Ten-year-old car. Explain. I know this is when I signed the check, so I'm going to ask the question. Anyway, the, in the custodial account. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the other employee benefits, yep. flex money, staff. Just what yep. exactly is that? Each uh, each employee gets two hundred. Each certified employee gets two hundred seventy-five dollars in flex funds, and I believe that came about. I don't know at what time before our time, mm -hmm. and it's when Vision Care was dropped from their health. Could have been. So I believe the, the uh, and Chad, you might even know. It was before <laughs> me, but it was when they let the uh, deductible jump up. If I remember correctly, that was that when I first got here. Was that two? To two some, and but our deductible is real low. And then they let the deductible go up. To let the duct deductible go up, they said, "Well, we want two seventy five. Okay. And they said, "Okay," because we, I think the deductible jumped like six hundred dollars. Yeah. I mean, it was a huge amount. Of money. Just to offset that. Yeah, to offset that, it's on the contract to allow that to happen. Yeah. It made it cheaper for the school to do the insurance then, more than the amount that they gave us for it. So every certified employee has two hundred seventy-five dollars of reimbursed medical expenses throughout the year. So you know, it just offsets those. One hundred and fifty for the full time. For full time classified. For full time classified, yes. So Kelly just runs that through there. So you see a big uh, revenue for that, and then that'll throughout the year. You know, Kelly works claims for teachers every day. That you should take out the custodial account. Yes, you, you, so that's where you pay those out of then, Cal. Yes, sir. That's where you pay those out of then. Yes, so I'm a completely different account. That check is written from the general fund account to the custodial account, and then right. I take care of the custodial account. And they have to submit receipts um, to me in the auto form to put the money back. And then there's also the, the folks that, that get additional funds taken from their check every month for that purpose because it's been before tax. How many teachers do that? There's several. Several, there's several teachers several, have. Pre-tax monies go into that account, and in it all goes in I saw this list month. Anyway, when I, yeah. I looked at it, so the that teacher has a huge so medical dollars. expense in September. Okay, they could have several thousand dollars in in uh, flex funds, okay. in that, that that they're essentially taken from the future checks, but it's to pay off and then reimbursement. They can also add like uh, uh, 
dental and eye insurance too, can't they? Which is at their own cost and then pull that yes, out. Yes, anything past a single tax would come out. Uh, also, daycare expenses. So it's not just done reimbursed medical. So if you have children in daycare, you can pre tax pay that it's through this account. Got it. Thank you. What's the black backflow football field? Well, it's this device that has to go on the hydrant down there that we use from the city. Of course, for years and years and years, we just had free water, but then the city's like, wait a minute, we're going to put a meter on that. So then we had to pay. Uh, and then there's this backflow valve. I don't know what the heck it is, but it's a necessary device required by law. Well, one afternoon, Kurt came and said, I got to take that backflow valve because Black Hills needs it where they're building their new thing. Well, that's when there, it quit raining. We had to water the field, but we couldn't water the field without a backflow valve. So they said, we got to take this one. We, it's more important over there. You got to get your own. Oh, OK. Backflow so that they make sure the water doesn't go back into yeah. the water system with any type of pollutant. Our houses, our houses in place are supposed to have it on us. Mine doesn't. I said something one time, a long time ago. And You're on camera. That's all right. <laughs> you know, check. It's, it's, a, it's supposed to be on your house to stop so, anything from your outside hose going back into your house. The city was kind enough to let us use theirs for the past couple of years uh, because they put that new hydrant out there and they can do something to do. And now they're charging us for water also. The water yeah. So we had to also get one of those. It's just water. Well, so we have our own now. I suppose, yeah. I mean, honestly. Yeah, can't. I didn't even know that it was not to be honest. Yeah. So we went and said, well, the city's going to take care of the new business. It'll make it rain. It's pretty cheap. Okay, any other questions on the consent agenda? Ron, I'll let you vote for it. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. Mr. First and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Can you also have a public comment? Anybody want to speak tonight? I want to read this. Okay. Number eight committee reports, the budget committee. Just if you have any final comments before we get to action items, I guess that's one of the reasons I put that on. Jim Christie, I think you said very well. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Number nine, American Civics. Okay, so our, our Americanism Committee is now called the American Civics Committee. And uh, I think I shared with you last month or month before, you know, they, uh, there's a new, a new law that requires uh, school districts to make sure that they are, uh, their materials are promoting American patriotism and that, you know, you're, you're, you're promoting Americanism as much as you can in your schools, which seems to go against, you know, a lot of the things you see out in culture, you know, we're going to offend people if we're too American, you know, I don't know, but uh, the requirements of the American Civics Bill, uh, most every school is already doing, so they just kind of spell out, hey, make sure you do this and this and this, but there's one of three requirements, you know, you have to give the naturalization test to your eighth graders and to your seniors, uh, uh, kids have to do one project on something that promotes American ideals or you have to do a report on a famous American. I mean, we do all those things in social studies. Every school practically has. Okay, but one thing that I did notice on it is you have to have three members on your committee, and we only had two. So, Mr. Souser needs to appoint uh, uh, somebody from the board to be the third member on the American Civics Committee, which must meet twice a, a year. So, this, somebody's going to get appointed to this committee and get an additional meeting between next and well, already, and the winner is? I already came up with a name, but if somebody would like to volunteer that wants on this committee, I'll give you that chance. Right now it is. <laughs> Thor and what? Yes. So you two can't volunteer again. So if either of the rest of you would like to be on this committee, now's your chance. If not, 
Congratulations, Trent. You're on the least captain on our committee. Any of us, so you've been down now. <laughs> okay, so I'll send out a note, but uh, Wyatt and Trent and, and Doc Thor, we need to meet at 6.30 before the regular meeting next October. Sure. So we'll just meet just right before the meeting. Sure. Uh, uh, Mrs. Thompson and Mr. Schmidt will be here to report on what we are doing to meet the uh, uh, American Civics Americanism bills requirements. And don't you read all of those projects that the kids do to this committee that night? Yes, every single one. That's why the school we're meeting. That's, yeah, that's why we're meeting at 6 30 a.m. That's a good thing we don't see all this. It is, sorry, Jim. It is October 14th. So that's the latest that school board meeting can do. October 14th at 6 30. But I'll send another one. I lost it. Okay, number 10, discussion items, Watson Building. So I was contacted by a prospective buyer in the building uh, who's working with Al Raji in Norfolk. Uh, he only wants the front half, and he, of course, you got to buy the whole thing. And so Al told him, Plenty Public Schools talked with us about purchasing it. They were kind of interested in it, seemed in the shop area, and using it as a learning facility, and blah, blah, blah. And so uh, he gave this gentleman, my name, he called me and he said, hey, if I buy the whole thing, would the school be interested in just leasing the shop space? I, I don't know, I guess it depends on what <laughs> what that amount would be. But uh, so there's a potential for, to, to not purchase it, but to just lease the space from the owner who only wants the front half to turn it into a business. Uh, so, not something that need, obviously needs to be decided today, but and I'm waiting to hear back from him on his after he's doing some negotiations with Alan, so he finds out what. But that's going to be kind of a triangle, difficult thing because again, this board probably can't move that fast to decide. I mean, it, but probably a discussion that needs to happen. Okay, if we were interested in this, what would the school district be willing to pay, and then what are we going to use this for? Is any of the equipment still there? Or got to go. I do not know what's in there. I don't know if they took the, the lifts out. I'd be surprised if they took them out. Yeah, I'm not sure. sure. They would have left with those guys. Yeah. They just kind of, I mean, one day it's they were probably a mess. For the most part. But. You know, no doubt. But um, anyway, I said, well, sure, I'll take that to the board and see. But he's kind of on a, a time limit because he wants to do that exchange, that property exchange, you know, so he wants to get it traded. For that, so it's, it's maybe got a couple months. Well, yeah, six months, I think. 180 time. days, I think, from the time the sale. The time he bought this business down there. Doctor, do you know anything more than we do? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of business is going to be in the front of it? Do you know? Any idea? It's going to be vague, but just Maybe an auto supply. Okay. All right. And it's a group of investors in Norfolk, from what I have okay. So it could kind of tie in with that. Yeah. Sure. Good. Auto closers. So I'll try and stay on top of that, and maybe, uh, you know, building grounds, maybe you should <coughs> start thinking about next several months and then two and through next summer, maybe. Uh, if this budget is passed, you know how much money you have to deal with in the building fund. Or how much, you know, so you, so you can make some plans, but because you know what your revenues are. Any idea if we lease the space, is he willing to reconfigure it, remodel it to our needs? No, we have yeah, no idea. Okay. I doubt it. I doubt it. Yeah, it is, I is, wouldn't have a classroom. Is he does not yeah, have yeah, a yeah, I'm sure. It's well, something, you? It depends on whether they want that parts room or not. Yeah, that's kind of that goes with them or with the back. That would be turned into classrooms. But yeah, if he wants that, well, then that's going to shrink down the rest of it. I think a lot needs to be answered. Yeah. Like there's a lot of, we might be able to lease it, but there's going to be a lot of money put in it to bring it up to code, to bring it up to mm -hmm. air conditioning and heating. And just, I don't know. Who's going to pay for that? If yeah. We're, if we're leasing it, exactly. we should not pay for it. So. <laughs> yeah. What do you do? 
Okay, number 11, review board policy series 403, employees and outside relations. Okay, I, I don't have any recommendations for language change on any of the 403s. Is it a crime to not report? Yes. I mean, for any of us, yes. if we saw something on the school uh, board members, are they mandatory reporters? I think so, yes. Okay. I've never heard of it in many years. You know, it's, it's a, that's a tough thing to prove. But I suppose it could happen. I just wonder, you know, sometimes you see it principal chasing a student down the sidewalk, is that child abuse or is that <laughs> trying to keep the school or you know, how, where does that fall? That's <laughs> <laughs> Depends, is it one of us? Yes. No, if they have a taser gun on it's <laughs> throwing things out. Yeah. So can you explain this uh, fundraiser deal, how that yeah, in fact, that was a relatively new policy um, that was required, and just because of crowdfunding, which I don't know a whole lot about. Crowdfunding is a way to try to generate funds through the internet, so it's just it's just trying to uh, do some. It's like robocalls almost. Just throw a whole bunch of something out there and, and see if we can get something in return. So. This policy is similar to the one that it replaced, but it added crowdfunding, which you know, is just something new that sprang up that the unit camera said, oh, we need to. So it doesn't have anything to do with like selling cookies or anything like that to raise money? Um, those are all local decisions. Okay, if there's no more questions on that, we'll move on to the action items. Well, discuss and take possible action on adopting the 2019-2020 school budget. Open it back up to discussion by the board if there's any more questions or comments. Move on it. If not, I'd like to have a motion to approve it. I'll second that. First and second. Myself, yes. What? Yes. Tim? Yes. Trent? Yes. Dr. Thorne? Yes. Krista? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, our second action item, or 13, discuss and take possible action on approving the tax request for the 2019-2020 school year. Okay, is there any more discussion by the board? Comments? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the tax request for the 2019-20 school year as presented. Second. I'll second. Krista? Yes. Trent? Yes. Tim? Yes. Wyatt? Yes. So, yes. Motion carries. Okay, I move on to the report. So the 14 activity directors report. Mr. Reed must not have been able to come with Mr. Reed is having, he had a pre-op meeting today. No, he's okay. having a, he, he getting a whole new knee, Mr. Yeah. Schmidt. Knee replacement uh, okay. next week. So, yeah, roughly two weeks ago. He's been riding around. He's in bad shape. Yeah. 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 Is, is it the same as his ankle, same leg? So that leg is just healing from his ankle surgery from the summer. But, but I said fix those wheels because we need a lot more years out of it. 
So who will be covering this? Mrs. Lingenfelder will be covering this classroom, but everybody else will pitch in on that. Okay, number 15, principal's report. Okay, so I'll go first. Um, map growth testing, we started today um, in both schools. Um, testing should be finished by September 23rd and that's with makeup testing. Um, this year we will not be testing science for third to fifth grade since science is not counting. Um, for the state. Um, we will still test sixth grade though. Um, I did talk to Brandy and she is still kind of iffy though with fifth grade so we may we may still decide with fifth grade to go ahead and test. So that's still kind of up in the air. Um, Acadians uh, is what used to be Dibbles. So we did a cadence testing in kindergarten through sixth grade about a week ago. And so Steph Lundgren came from ESU 8 and trained all of the new teachers. And that used to take about two weeks because teachers did all of their students and we knocked it out in one day. Um, so we just got a team and we about Five of us just hit every classroom, and it was awesome. Um, so this year, in accordance with no, the new Nebraska Reads Initiative, we do have to send letters to any student who is not reading at grade level. So those letters will be going out. Um, there are, let's see, 27 students in, um, kindergarten through third grade who will be getting letters um, which is not it sounds like a lot but that's not bad with the summer slide it's really not and when you think kindergartners they've never taken this test and we're asking them to tell us the initial sound of a word instead of asking them to tell us a letter so this is a test that's completely foreign to them um, so I would imagine by, heck, if we gave them the test right now, they'd probably be just fine and pass the test. So um, by parent-teacher conferences, they'll be just fine. And I'll make sure that in the letter it's worded that way so parents are not concerned. Um, let's see, accelerated math and accelerated reader. I worked really hard with um, Heather Miller from Renaissance to lower the cost of the program that we've been using. So the initial quote that we had was over $6,000 and I got that quote down to about 3,400. There is no AR um, in the secondary building. That doesn't mean that we're not pushing reading in the secondary building. There's just no need for AR over here. And AR is a lot of lower level questioning. And um, it's just not needed over here. This was a $12,000 bill two years ago. And yeah. Heather's got it down to 3400 you know, And that was wasted. 3400 we will use. 3400 yes. is what we used several years ago, but we paid twelve. Yeah. So we were paying for stuff we didn't need and weren't using. Yeah. Was there so. an option back then? Yes. There was. Yes. It was just being rolled over and paid. Yeah. So, I mean, I just... Every every bill that she sent, I would kind of nitpick and nitpick and nitpick until she finally just, okay, what will you pay for? <laughs> so, <laughs> so what do you do like when you get up to the seventh grade and they're not at the reading level? Since we're not doing AR anymore. Or well, no. and I don't think it's a matter of them not doing AR. No, what, um, what? I think, honestly, it's, it's a matter of building a love for reading at the elementary level. Um, and if you're building a love for reading at the elementary level, then they're going to continue read that love for reading over here, and they're going to continue wanting to read over here. And then it's just having those incentives. Um, and I've talked to teachers over here about different ways to incentivize reading over he over here. Um, <coughs> but it's about building that love over there. 
Um, and really, with AR, yes, you're you're finding their reading level, and you you can start with recommending books at their level. But I would never hold a kid to the fire and say you can only read <coughs> books at your color dot. AR is actually the worst <coughs> thing to do for a kid in junior high that doesn't read it very well. Absolutely. It's the worst thing to do. So I, I know. I'm not saying <coughs> AR, but yeah. I mean, we yeah. all know how important reading yeah. is. Yes. If a kid doesn't read at grade level in seventh grade, they're almost certainly never going to read at grade level. Once right. they get past fourth grade, it's, it's virtually impossible to catch them up. So yeah, if you get them to a, thankfully, a fourth grade leading, reading level, you can function in society. For the fourth grade leading. Now, can you excel in society? No. Are you going to go to you going to go to a four-year university and be successful? But no. But if you can read at a fourth grade level, you can read well enough to do your shopping, uh, to you know read a, a simple chart, map, road sign, whatever. So that's the that's the hard truth on it. So a seventh grader that doesn't read at reading level. We just continue to put materials at their level in their hands so they develop enough confidence, you know, so so that they can, you know, get a diploma with the seventh grade reading level or whatever. That's the real reality. You're still providing. My hope is support. that we're not seeing that because we're ingraining it over there, you know, with with parents who are reading to kids and mm -hmm. with a library who is encouraging a love for reading and you know getting those kiddos who who maybe don't like reading finding their interest levels and getting them books that they you know a graphic novel most kids are going to love graphic novels so finding their graphic novel that they're going to like finding them a sports book that they do like well i mean it just makes like dr world said we have to do something to help them absolutely to get a book I mean, absolutely we just don't want them to be able to buy groceries and right. street signs. You know. Well, and we also don't want a program that requires them to reach a certain point and then, level. Yeah. If they don't reach that point, we don't want a program to right. stop their love. For, so we don't want it to get in the way either way. So, um, but either way, that is, that's purchased now for the year. Um, McGraw-Hill and Pearson orders you know, for some reason, those orders were very funky the previous year. Um, so Pearson uh, for social studies, those orders had been completed. Um, for whatever reason, fifth grade was completely left out. Um, so we that's why there was a bigger check for social studies textbooks. Um, so the, that year is now complete. Um, they haven't been received, but I believe they are on the way. Yes, they are. Um, and then McGraw-Hill, we did science and um, geometry. Those were just online codes that we had to order. We are still waiting for some kindergarten materials as well. Um, but then once we get those things, so those will be annual that we have to order, but it's it'll be very minimal, uh, maybe $200 annually for online codes that we need for our teachers. Um, and then the last thing is cognitive coaching training that I have um, been able to go to. It is awesome. Um, so it's eight days total that I'll be able to go to, and I've gone to two days. Um, so it is at ESU 8, so I'll be going to Neely. Um, it's been very beneficial for a, for me as a principal and as an instructional coach. Um, the first two days were just really about um, reflective listening and um, rephrasing, so paraphrasing, and I don't know, it's been great. I'm excited to get the rest of the training and put it to some use. So. I promised I wouldn't talk long. You're up. I meant to talk Yep, yep, sorry. Uh, all right, secondary-wise, uh, obviously school started. We got things kicked off with a school carnival, which was awesome. Um, if you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff, we had, we try and socialize a bunch of things and get, get our kids out there and what we're doing with the school. Uh, we did meet with ESU, um, looking at additional services that we can 
that we can try this year from them. One of them, for example, being Ed Ready. It's a program that they have that we can provide additional services to students. So say they're struggling math, we can get them online math uh, modules so they can get extra work and help them get caught up. I know we've offered that with one student already. So just trying to find extra ways to provide kids with things that they need. So is that stuff they could do at home? Yep. Online and home yep. Home. So it's all online and it's based off of, so like the one we have is in math. So Mr. Boyer and I set it up. And for that student, we can send out uh, different modules that that student can look at that matches the lessons that he's teaching. So basically, it's just a reinforcement for whatever he's doing in class. Um, and it's another way for them to see how how to do it, I guess, another avenue for them to look at it. Does he have a computer home from school then, or can they pull it up on their computer? They can pull it up on their computer. Um, staff development day on September 4th we had Katie Morrow come in and she led our staff with different technologies it was about two and a half hours she talked on Google exclusively talked about Google Docs Google Sheets classroom all those things gave our teachers a plethora of things to look at um, she will be back in the elementary on the 17th right September 17th she's here all day to interact with them she's coming back on the 18th to work with our high school teachers um, so really, whatever they're trying, they can question and answer and stuff like that with her. Um, we released a school app for the webpage, if you guys haven't seen it. So you can go to your app store and download that. It makes navigating the webpage a lot easier. Um, last week, Dr. Arrow started some Mission Monday stuff with us as teachers. Um, asked us to reach out to previous students that had an impact on us. And this week, we have... Um, teachers take a picture of the students who are getting engaged in different learning experiences and they've been sending that to Mrs. Thompson and I so we've been blowing up Twitter with those things um, just kind of showing what's going on in our classrooms and the different experiences our kids are having uh, I asked all the secondary staff and I know she asked elementary staff to use plan book for our lesson plans so it's all digitalized um, and it's all, all in one place, so we're able to look at all the different teachers' lesson plans, what's going on, what standards we're reaching, um, what should be getting taught, and that way it can validate whatever we should see in the classroom when we walk through. Um, implementation of technology. Um, Mr. Souser, the laptop cards have been empty constantly. Um, teachers are utilizing everything we have and using it on a daily basis. Um, whether it be for simple reviews, lessons, assignments, whatever it is. But, um, you know, he's talked about how he's had sheets and it's tough to get things planned and figured out just because they're being used so much. So he, he's really excited about that. We talk a lot about uncommon experiences. Um, we've had the ag class cutting hay, raking hay, baling hay, all that stuff. Our computer science class with Miss Darnell um, we went to the library and used the CNC machine. And then also she took her class down to the telephone company, which is a unique experience for them. Um, being the first, I think we're the fourth town in the whole United States to be fully fiber optic. So um, very exciting for kids to experience that. Mrs. Sturkel used the vinyl cutter at the micro studio. And I know she's had kids down there this week again today. So um, using, utilizing that a lot. FFA, FCCLA kicked off all up and running. FCCLA was in Kearney yesterday and today for leadership. FFA will be gone on Wednesday, going to Husker Harvest Days. And I know Mr. Clement has a lot of cool assignments for them to utilize while they're down there. And, and so they're getting uh, vital things out of that experience. Um, fall activities are all off and running, as you've seen. And then, like Mrs. Thompson said, our map testing has started. And that'll last this week and next week. We should be finished with it. So that's your secondary. Sounds busy. <laughs> So how's the uh, transportation working with like MFA and FCCLA? Any problems getting drivers to pick them down? Or they not well, buses or? yeah, they well they take vans, and so uh, Renita was able to drive because she just had one van. I don't know how many are going to Husker Harvest days. I think twenty. So that's a bus. Yeah, they're still got chats. Got to see the yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's always always helpful if you have a few teachers, coaches. You have to have a chaperone then since he's driving or not? No. Uh, He's got a mirror. <laughs> yeah, I would not make him mad either. <laughs> he throw over, yeah, just look, <laughs> supervise and drive. You might have to turn around a time or two and wipe his finger with that. Accidentally run the ditch. 
Okay, well, thank you, too. It sounds like you're doing a great job and very good reports. Yeah. You're saving us a little money along with you. So not that that's the most important thing, but it's always nice to when the two go together. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, President's report. I'm going to cut mine short. It's done. It's the superintendent's report. <laughs> Gail, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you ever have month. to actually call that. Uh, so I will send out. Just ask me. Uh, I'll send out an email tomorrow or a message to see who wants to go to September 25th uh, area membership meeting with NASB. They were kind of coming through town the other day, stopped for lunch, and a few people were coming and had It was just their treat. Just to network, get to know some of the folks that serve. The school board that's at NASB he serves the school board, so they have an area meeting in Norfolk on this evening of the 25th. And so, <coughs> um, so I'll try to confirm who can all attend that would be good if you could go. Uh, in addition, this is your your state convention is November 20th to 22nd in Omaha. This has been down at the La Vista at uh, Embassy Suites in La Vista for the past several years. Mike's gone a few years, I don't know, Chris, if you've gone, uh, Vicky's gone, she went last year. Uh, it's worth it. And they're they're moving the whole thing to the CHI, so it's going from one end of the city to the other. Uh, but we we uh, but they don't have the they didn't have the lodging out in La Vista for everybody. So we actually stayed at Embassy Suites downtown at the old market and would take a shuttle, which was fine. But they want everybody in one place, so everybody, uh, the whole state, the Hilton and the Marriott Capital District, which is the new one just south up the hill, can accommodate the thousands of people that. That attend this conference statewide, and so we'll be at the CHI Center, which is the premier convention center in the state of Nebraska, really. So, uh, and that's uh, November 20th and 22nd. So that'd be the evening of the 20th and the evening of the 21st. So it'll be a two-night stay uh, to attend this convention. But it is spectacular. You shouldn't be getting this in the mail. If you if your address is on file at NASB, you should get this. If you don't, I'll certainly make a copy or make it available to you. So you have a little bit of time, but please pencil that in. Would love to take the full love to take them forward to this. Uh, it's, it's a tremendous experience, not only for us to go and be immersed in it together as a, as a leadership team for our district, uh, but this is built for you. This is not built for administrators. It's built for school board members. So uh, we'll talk more about that, but pencil that in. Uh, uh, it doesn't look like we're going to be offering a close-up opportunity to our kids this year. We just don't have somebody that wants to take it. It's not a school activity. It's not something I can assign to anybody. Uh, somebody, I just don't have anybody that feels they want to go through the fundraising during the school year and then take a week and take, you know, anywhere from five to eight to 10 to 12, 15 kids to Washington for five or six days. So I'm not gonna give up on it. That can change on any given year. Can it be somebody outside the school system? They can sure do it if they want. Just didn't somebody, Brooke volunteer? To say again? Brooke Hurst volunteered that one I did. Well, Brooke said something about it. Uh, he'll. Brooke will watch this later tonight <laughs> and call me probably tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, and you know, the, I, you know, there's there are a variety of ways to get kids to Washington D.C. to experience your, your 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 nation's capital. There are a variety of ways. Close up isn't the only way. There are a variety of ways and variety of times to do it. Eighth grade is kind of traditional year to take kids on a traditional tour of D.C. Um, you know, and, and you know, that, that could be an option for us sometimes. We just need somebody that wants to that wants to do it because it's a it's a year long process to to plan and fundraise. Uh, and so, if you, so anyway, that's just where we're at with that. And gathering information on replacing the bell clock system. Our clock, none of our clocks work. They're all off. The bells we have accurate. The clocks are not accurate. They can't be fixed. So I'll be bringing that to the. I don't know if it's going to be two thousand or twenty thousand. To be honest with you. But uh, we're checking into, you know, replacing the whole bell tone clock system. We do have to have accurate clocks. And just just uh, pass the budget. Is there yeah. any <laughs> It's a hassle even at, in the elementary when we aren't going by bells and we are going by clocks. Yeah, elementary comes over here for art and PE and a variety well, of other things. And I mean, even over there. Just, yeah. When we're going to and from specials. Yeah, because the clocks over there are like, just, I think, atomic clocks. Mm -hmm. And so they should all be, but they're not. So, so all work even, over there is what you're saying, that you get over here and they're different? Oh, so no, so. they don't work oh, over there. Oh, they don't work over there. elementary would benefit <laughs> from a synchronized system. Yes. They all have clocks that you put a battery in, and it, it's, yeah. it just, 
Yes, because they do a lot of movement over there. Mm -hmm. Teachers trade, kids, they go to specials. They get, you know, I mean, so it just can be hard to be efficient when you're navigating through the day. So there's your under enrollment update. I have not had any meetings out of the district since last month. Vacation at St. Pounds. That is all I have to report. Any other comments? Questions? Well, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Dr. Ralph, is she working here? Am I the secretary or do you have a person to sign that one? Someone just have a person to sign that one. Hold it up for me.